While you might only think of meta ads campaigns as showing up in Facebook and Instagram news feeds, it's actually quite a few more places that your ads can show up around the Facebook audience network. Depending on your brand specificities and your creatives, it might be okay for you to show up in all of those placements, or it might be necessary for you to start to exclude some of them. So in this video, we're going to give an overview of the placements that you can target on the meta ads network and start to discuss a couple scenarios where you might want to limit some of the placements for your campaigns. We're going to be in one of our client accounts today. So just like some of the previous videos, we apologize for things that need to be blurred out, but the best way for you to see how you can control the placements on Facebook or the entire meta ads network is going to be through a live account. The first thing to know is that the placement targeting within the meta ads platform lives at the ad set level. So I've already narrowed down into one campaign and I'm in the ad sets here. And to start looking at the controls, I'm just going to come up to this one and click edit. We'll skip all the way through the rest of the setup here. But one thing I want to call out is that this is a conversion campaign with a goal to drive users to a website. Because of that, some of the placements will not be eligible for this campaign. But depending on your campaign objectives, as well as the performance goal that you're setting at the ad set level, some of these placements may be toggled on or toggled off for you. But in this example, you might see some that are missing. As I mentioned, we're going to skip over all of the remaining setup piece. And we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this screen. So let's do that real quick. And down here at the bottom is where the placement targeting is going to live. By default, you can see that we have Advantage Plus placements selected. This means that these ads are going to run across the entire Meta Ads network in every single placement. And Facebook says that your budget will be used by their delivery system, deciding which placements are likely to perform best based on all of the goals and target audiences you set. Advantage Plus placements is the equivalent of automatic placements, if you've been doing this for a while. And in many of the accounts that we run, we leave everything opted into Advantage Plus placements because we have a lot of other controls that we can use that we'll get into in previous videos. But to start adjusting which placements we run on, we just need to hover over this section till we have the edit link that pops up. We'll click this. Now we'll scroll down just a little bit. And to start adjusting the placements themselves, we need to click on the button next to Manual Placements. And then when we do this, a few things happen. First, we get this huge list down here at the bottom. We'll go through this just in a second. But the first thing is that we can start to control the devices that we use for our meta ads campaigns. If I click edit here, you'll see that all devices is recommended and it is the automated choice. But if you wanted to, you could focus on only mobile or desktop. So if we uncheck desktop, we'll now target only mobile devices on the meta ads network. Again, depending on your campaign or account goals, optimization events, that sort of thing, might make sense for you to decide which device categories can engage with your meta ads. The next option is going to be the platforms themselves. And this is effectively a shorthand version for all of the options that are going to be in this list down here. If you wanted to target only the Facebook and Instagram platforms, you just need to uncheck the box by audience network and by messenger. And actually, just for the sake of you seeing the checkboxes go away, let's assume you only want to be on Facebook. So if you'll pay attention down here to the different checkboxes, as soon as I uncheck Instagram, you'll see that a number of these options went away. So each time I choose a different platform up here, the different placements that correspond to those platforms are going to be opted into or out of categorically. You'll see here that now that I've unchecked three of the networks, one is left and it's grayed out because you have to target at least one of them or else your campaign's not going to run. For now, let's check back into each of these different networks. So we'll have all the options pop up. But if you want to get a little bit more granular than just the platforms themselves, you can start to uncheck individual segments of targeting. So the first option is going to be all of the news feeds, whether it's for Facebook, Instagram feed, a profile feed, Facebook Marketplace, Instagram Explore, all of these different options are here. You can either uncheck individual locations within the feeds. You'll see that that throws up quite a number of errors. Or if you wanted to, you could uncheck the entire section of feeds. There's going to be very few examples of an account where I would suggest that you uncheck the feed. You're probably almost always going to want to opt into that because it has the most reach. But if we keep going down through the different options here, we then have stories and reels. So whether it's Instagram or Facebook, they each have their own stories and reels option. And you can adjust which ones you're opted into here. There's then in-stream ads, 
for videos and reels, as well as search results on both platforms. Messages here are grayed out because this campaign type does not support messages. We're sending people to a website, not messages. But again, if you are using this as your engagement action, you could utilize Messenger as a placement to show up. And last is gonna be apps and sites. These are going to be audience network locations, whether it's native banner and interstitial ads or rewarded videos. And before we get into any thoughts around which placements you should target or how to evaluate for yourself, I do wanna come down here to this more section because it is part of placements. And the first part up here is really useful. This is going to be a much more targeted effort around devices and operating systems specifically for mobile users. Here, if we click the edit pencil, you can see we then have a dropdown of where you can choose all mobile devices, just Android or just iOS. You can then also choose to only target users when they're opted into Wi-Fi so that you're not taking up anybody's data plans. And then lastly, you can adjust if you want to show up in skippable ads in this ad set or not. All of these are gonna be based on your own targeting, optimization events, KPIs for the campaigns. The last section here, I'm not gonna talk about this very much because we'll have videos coming up about the brand safety and suitability controls, but we do have the option to opt in and out of certain inventory filters, block lists, content type exclusions, as well as topic exclusions for in-stream videos. So again, this will be an upcoming video, so stay on the lookout for that, but it would have been remiss if I didn't at least mention it in this one. For now, let's go ahead and close this down and go back to the list that we have here. The last thing I wanna talk about today is how you would think about opting into or out of any of these placements on the Facebook network and why. One of the big issues with some of these different placements comes down to what your ads will look like in each of these locations. If you have a design team that's able to put together lots of different creatives for you with all different dimensions to fit perfectly into the space, that's great, but not everybody has that ability. So first, if you're trying to figure out whether or not you should target a specific placement or not, I would suggest you just stay in this view, right like this, and you'll notice over here off to the right, every time I hover over one of these, it'll give you a bit of a preview as to what an ad will look like in that location. Each of these also will then tell you what image sizes they recommend, as well as what videos, and then where your ads will be able to appear. So if we go down to Instagram Reels, they suggest full vertical nine by 16 videos, and the videos are limited to 900 seconds or less. Ideally, it'll be a lot less than that. But then if you were in Instagram Stories, again, same dimensions for either your images or videos, but then they give you some detail around what an Instagram Story will do. So they rotate from one to the next and gradually fade into view. Ad impressions are billed when the ad story rotation begins. And then you've got some style and formatting down here. And if you want, you can have additional insights by clicking the learn more button. So this is the first level of review that I would encourage you to do. The second option is still around your ad creatives, but it's more around how your specific ads will look. Within the Meta Ads platform, you can preview your ads in each of the different locations. Since I'm already in an active ad set, I'm just gonna come over here and click on one of the ads. Again, I apologize that we have to blur out some of this, but you'll at least see what the process looks like. At a high level, you can come over here and see the preview at this version. You can then scroll through each of the different feed options that will all be the same as the list before. So we had Instagram Explore, Facebook Business Explore. If we scroll down, we've got Stories and Reels. So we'll see Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, Instagram Stories, Facebook Stories. All of these different previews will show up over here and it'll follow the same list of the placements that we had. But if you wanna see these on a bigger scale, you could either come over and click into one of these. So let's just do Facebook Stories. And now this section will show you the preview of the ad itself, or you can use Advanced Preview. And here you can see all of the different versions of your ads based on each placement that's in here. And you can filter for just the feeds, just the stories, or just the right column and search results, depending on what you wanna see. For now, I'm gonna X out of this. The main consideration around your ad creative really comes down to how your ads look in each of the individual placements. If while you're previewing them either on the small version or that advanced preview, you see that some of the ads just don't look very good or the colors aren't quite right, anything like that, that might be a good option to opt out of that placement until you have better creative. Now as a teaser for another video, 
There are ways that you can customize your ads by each individual placement in the Facebook ads platform. We'll be coming out with that in the next few weeks. So stay tuned if you don't have the option to make additional creatives. But for now, I just want to cover the last way that you would want to review and decide which placements you want to target with your Facebook ads. I'm back at the ad set level. And as you can see, even though there's not a ton of volume, these two ad sets have been running for a little bit. So there is some data here. Outside of just your creative considerations, performance is gonna be a big option for deciding if you wanna stay opted into all placements or not. And this is a pretty easy thing to review. I'm gonna slide over just a little bit so we can see the result stats that we have as well. And to see the performance for each of the placements that we've had in this account, you'll remember we were on Advantage Plus. So we've been opted into every single placement. We would just come up to breakdown. If you've had it recently used, it'll show up up here. Popular would be by placement or by delivery, it will show up by placement here. Any of those options will do the exact same thing, but I wanted to make sure that you knew it was down in the delivery section if you don't have it in some of these higher up sections as well. Now what that does is it breaks down all of our data into each of the individual placements, whether it's Facebook feed for desktop or Facebook feed for mobile. So we've got a ton of insight into which placements as well as which device category is performing for this account. And overall, this is pretty standard in terms of performance from what I've seen in the past and accounts that I've been running for quite a while. Most of the performance is gonna be coming from the mobile groups for the Facebook feed and Instagram feed. But there are incremental impressions an additional reach in all these other locations. If we scroll down a little bit, see down here at the bottom, Instagram stories is another big one. And each of these different placements is doing relatively well. If I scroll over just a little bit, you can see that only the highest three volume drivers have the purchases that we're looking for. But overall, these results look great for this account. Our target CPA was around 20 bucks, so we are well under it, but we're limited by budget, so we can't increase things any further at the moment. Now, while you might think that each of these other placements isn't driving a lot of volume, so you might just wanna turn it off. I would caution you against that. In the way that Facebook has been performing better and better with larger and larger audiences, they're also likely going to perform best if you have more placements opted into. A lot of this has to do with the privacy settings and losing performance data and some of the targeting options that we had in the past. Facebook's machine learning is helping to fill in those gaps but it needs to learn to be able to do that. If nobody ever opted into the audience network for native banners and interstitials, it would have no idea whether it should show it there or not, and it would really be a shot in the dark. So if you're looking to customize your placements on Facebook, remember it's done at the ad set level. You can control it for platforms or individual placements, but then if you're going to make a choice to opt out of specific placements, I would only do it for two reasons. First, your ad creatives do not look good in those placements and they put your brand in a bad light and you're not able to customize those placements, which again, we'll have a video on that coming up. But if you just cannot recover your ads and make them look good in that placement, that would be an option to opt out. The second option would be if performance in that location is poor. Now, I would not categorize a placement with 11 impressions and only nine cents of spend as poor. There's not much volume going through there, but that's not bad performance. If our target CPA was $20 and this location had a $50 or $75 CPA and there simply wasn't anything I could do to make it come down, then I would look into turning it off. But low performance does not mean no performance. And the more wiggle room you give the Facebook machine learning to find people who are going to convert on your conversion actions, probably the better off you're gonna be. As I mentioned earlier, we are gonna to put together videos around customizing your ads by placement and the brand suitability controls. Both of those will help you to make sure that your ads look as good as they possibly can and show up only next to content that you're willing to be next to. But at this point, you now know how to take action on any of the placement targeting that you wanna have on Facebook so that once you have all of your ads created exactly how you want and they look as good as possible, and you have all of the brand safety controls in place, you'll know what actions to take if you simply can't get your ads to look good in a particular placement, or if that placement simply will not perform well enough for you to stay active in your campaigns. Keep an eye out for those future videos, but if you have any questions about placement targeting on Facebook, or I should say the Meta Ads platform, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, 
You can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.